Skeletal muscle is a type of muscle found in the human body and skeletal muscle is innervated, is controlled by the somatic nervous system. Now that basically means skeletal muscle is responsible for voluntary motion such as walking or running, so motion that we are consciously in control of. Now, skeletal muscle is positioned next to blood vessels as well as lymph vessels and that means when we contract our skeletal muscle, for example, when I'm contracting, when I'm moving my hand, the skeletal muscle inside my hand is contracting and that increases the blood flow as well as the lymph flow inside the vessels of our body. Now, when our skeletal muscles contract, they also release a good deal of energy, of energy that we cannot actually use. And so the way that our body gets rid of this energy is by releasing it, is by dissipating it in the process of sweating. Now, if we're outside and it's very cold outside, what our body does, the hypothalamus basically induces our somatic nervous system to essentially contract our skeletal muscle. And what this does is it increases the amount of energy that is released and that increases the temperature of our body. It basically helps maintain the core temperature of our body at 36.7 degrees Celsius in this process is known as shivering. So the skeletal muscle is responsible for the process of shivering when it's really cold outside or when we're very sick. Now, let's move on to our structure of our skeletal muscle. Now, we know that the smallest functional unit of the skeletal muscle is our sarcomere and the sarcomere consists of thick filaments made up of a protein known as myosin and thin filaments made up of a globular protein known as actin and this is shown in this diagram. So we have the thick filament shown in purple with the myosin heads that basically attach to our thin filament that is shown in black. Now many of these sarcomeres are connected end to end to form a very long fiber we call the myofibril. So this is our myofibril that consists of many adjacent sarcomeres that are connected end to end. So this is one Z line, this is a second Z line and this is our sarcomere and many of these sarcomeres are connected to form the myofibril. Now, many of these myofibros are, are placed inside the cytoplasm of the muscle cell. So the muscle cell is also known as the muscle fiber or the myocyte. And inside our muscle cell, we contain many of these myofibros as shown in the following diagram. So if we take a cross section of the muscle cell, we get the following diagram. We have many of these red regions which are are our myofibrils. Now notice the cytoplasm has its own name. The cytoplasm of the muscle fiber is known as our sarcoplasm. Now inside the sarcoplasm around each one of the myofibrils we have a specialized type of endoplasmic reticulum known as the sarcoplasmic reticulum. Now what's so special about the sarcoplasmic reticulum is that it contains a high concentration of calcium and calcium is involved in the contraction of muscle as we'll see in the next lecture. Basically the sarcoplasmic reticulum releases the calcium and that induces the contraction of our muscle. So around the entire muscle cell we also have a specialized type of cell membrane. So basically this surrounding region is our cell membrane that is known as the sarcolemma. So this is our entire muscle fiber. It's the muscle cell and this portion that is covering our muscle cell shown in red is our sarcoplasm or our sarcolemma, the cell membrane. Now if we peel off a bit of this sarcolemma, we basically expose our sarcoplasmic reticulum that is shown in green. So this green portion inside the muscle cell is our sarcoplasmic reticulum. Now what exactly is so special about the membrane, the plasma membrane of our muscle cell? Well, the sarcolemma basically consists of these deep tunnels, these deep invaginations that tunnel all the way inside our cell. And these 
these are known as T tubules or transverse tubules that is shown in orange. So basically these T tubules go inside the cell and they are perpendicular to our myofibrils. So if the myofibrils extend this way, our T tubules go inside the cell perpendicular at a 90 degree angle. Now, what's so special about our T tubules? What is the function of these channels known as T tubules? Basically, these T tubules extend to our sarcoplasmic reticulum and the T tubules allow for a quick and rapid activation of those sarcoplasmic reticulum. Basically, our T tubules allow for the action potential to actually get inside the cell quickly and efficiently. So once again, we see that the sarcoplasmic reticulum contains a high concentration of calcium that is released during muscle contraction. Now, the plasma membrane that surrounds the muscle cell is called the sarcolemma. This specialized membrane contains invaginations known as T tubules or transverse tubules that run perpendicular with respect to our myofibrils and which run very deep into the cell and they allow the action potential to actually travel through the cell quickly and efficiently. Now, how does the action potential actually get to the cell in the first place? Well, basically, they arrive to the cell via the neurons, the axons of our neurons. So this is one particular neuron. We have the axon that basically deviates and eventually binds onto the membrane of the cell, and this is known as the neuromuscular junction, the motor end, the motor neuron end. So basically, at the neuromuscular ju uh, junction, we have the synapse between our axon terminal of the neuron and our cell membrane of this muscle cell. And the neurotransmitter that is used to pass down that action potential onto our cell membrane is known as our acetylcholine. Now, along with these axons of the neuron, we also have capillaries that run adjacent along the cell membrane of the muscle cell. And these capillaries are shown in brown. And what these capillaries do is they basically carry blood, which supplies our cell with oxygen and other nutrients, such as, for example, glucose. Now, many of these muscle fibers, many of these muscle cells are basically stacked together along with the neurons and the capillaries to form a cylindrical bundle that is known as our fascicle. So this is a fascicle. It consists of many of these muscle cells and these fascicles are even, f are, are even further bundled together to basically form the actual muscle that we can see on the macroscope level. So this is the muscle that we can see without actually using a microscope. So we see that the muscle actually consists of many divisions. So we, inside the muscle, we contain these fascicles. These fascicles actually contain our muscle cells, and these muscle cells contain the, the myofibrils that are composed of this, these sarcomere subunits, these sarcomere building blocks. Now, since our muscle cell is actually so long, it contains many nuclei, and that means that our skeletal muscles are multinucleated. Now, we know that just like our neurons, muscle cells, skeletal muscle cells, do not actually divide by mitosis. And the way that our skeletal muscle grows when we, for example, exercise is by increasing the thickness of our muscle cell. So the muscle cell will actually increase in thickness. It will increase its diameter, for example, because we're going to grow our myofibrils because the sarcomeres will grow and this will increase the size of our muscle cells and will ultimately increase the size of the muscle overall. So that's what happens when we exercise in this concept. This type of growing of the skeletal muscle is known as hypertrophy. Now, let's move on to the different types of skeletal muscle. So we have type 1 skeletal muscle, we have type 2A, and we have type 2B.
Now let's begin by describing what distinguishes each one of these muscles from the other. So type 1 muscle basically contains a high concentration of myoglobin, the special protein that carries oxygen in our muscles. Now myoglobin is similar to hemoglobin in that it carries the oxygen but it contains a different structure and myoglobin can only carry a single oxygen per myoglobin protein per myoglobin molecule. Now because our type 1 contains a high concentration of myoglobin it appears red under the microscope. Now our type 1 skeletal muscle also contains a very high concentration of mitochondria and when it breaks down ATP type 1 skeletal muscle breaks down ATP very slowly and as a result these are known as slow twitch muscles because they break down ATP slowly and that means these have a very low velocity of contraction. The contraction of type 1 muscles takes place relatively slowly and because of this they are actually slow to fatigue and contract slowly as mentioned earlier. Now, where exactly in our body would we normally find type 1 skeletal muscles? So, these are basically our postural skeletal muscles. Our skeletal muscles found in the back that basically give us our posture that allow us to actually stand and walk around without bending over or anything of, uh, like that. And that's exactly why they essentially are slow to fatigue. Now, let's move on to the type 2A and type 2 B skeleton muscle. These are known as fast twitching skeleton muscles because they actually contract quickly. Now just like type 1, type 2A also appear red under the microscope because they also have a high concentration of myoglobin. However, they actually break down ATP at a high rate and that's exactly why they contract quickly. And that's exactly why we call them fast twitch fibers fast twitch muscles. Now although they are still slow to fatigue, they have a low resistance to fatigue than our type 1. So type 1 muscles are capable of resisting fatigue at a very high percentage while type 2 a basically resist fatigue at a low rate than type 1. Now, what about type 2B? Well, type 2B muscles are basically those muscles that appear white and that's because they contain a relatively low concentration of myoglobin. Now, they break down ATP quickly, but at the same time, they actually fatigue very quickly and they contain a very high concentration of glycogen, our glucose, stored inside our muscles. So, type 1 skeletal muscles we usually find inside the postural muscles. They give us our posture. Type 2A are those muscles that are usually found within our legs. And type 2B are those muscles that are usually found within our arms and upper arms. So basically these are the three different types of skeletal muscle that we can find inside our body. Now of course these concentrations of these muscles inside an individual will vary from one individual to the next and they depend on not only genetics, the concentration of these uh, muscle types inside our individual depends not only on genetics but it also depends on how active they are in terms of exercising. So if they exercise a lot, for example, if they're runners, they're going to have a lot of type 2A muscles because these are the muscles found inside the legs. 